Welcome! Here we are again. Day. Do you know what day this is? Have you lost count? I have lost count. I, I, I have no idea what day of the week it is, let alone what day of this, <laughs> our challenge is. So going <laughs> so fast, isn't it? Isn't this it? is this is it seems day. like I just get I get up in the morning and then I end up having this whirlwind and then we're back again. <laughs> and it, it seems and just like a it's happening just like that. <laughs> it is, it is. What and, and then I was like, hello again, hello again. It, but well, we're not getting tired of it. Day 15. No, no, day 15, two weeks we've been at it, Gary. Day 15. Oh my god. Oh my it's god. Flown by. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Day 15, and God, haven't we covered a lot of subjects? Hi, haven't, Nikki. Haven't we covered a lot of subjects? Hi, Nikki. We really have. We've we've gone over so I've, I've, I've... many subjects. Sandra, did you see that lovely review in the Phoenix oh, wasn't group? That lovely? By Monica, I can't pronounce her surname. Uh, by Monica from Czech. And uh, yeah, did you see that? How lovely is that? She said, I... the actual quote was, uh, or I, I paraphrase, I've learned more from the Phoenix group and these these challenges than I've learned in horse keeping in 30 years. Do you know that? <laughs> it was so lovely written as well. Um, I know, right? I, I don't know whether I was um, a bit wussy this morning, but I had a tear when I when I read that. It was lovely. It was lovely. Yes, it Sandra lovely. says she did. She did. It was lovely. Hi, Toya. Toya's here tonight. She's got she's got the night off. She's on. I Dom, expect, Dom's I, I, disappeared. I expect Dom's cooking. Hi, Vivian. Uh, Sarah says, Lindsay, I feel like I just saw you. You did. And I nearly missed it. There I am working, busy, busy. And I looked up at, at the time and I went, <gasps> and I because of my personality, yeah. because of my personality, I'm like, no, do it now. So, yeah, hilarious. So I've just gone live on the HM page. Hello, Elisabetta. Angie's here. Angie Medler, nice to see you. Lisa's here. Hello. Hi, pal. Uh, hello from Sweden. Who's that? Is that Therese? Could be. I'm done a minute. Um, I've got a look. Toya um, says, oh, oh don't I'm waving. What am I waving for? Dom, Dom's here. He's done the cooking already. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Dom. <laughs> Sue Garvin is here. Susan Garvin, hello from West Wales. Hello, hello. And I, Sarah says, I ran inside to grab a coffee mid late yard. So now I'll take you to film the nets. <laughs> I'm glad that we're spending the evenings with you. I can, and in my head, I imagine you're, because, because I, when you put that video up earlier today in the Phoenix group, and I was looking at the, you know the topography of the land, and I, and I bet you can just see water all around you. I mean, fancy living i mean i thought where kate and libby lives you know and you i went and had a look at your island on a map and it's it's the inner hebrides isn't it and it's the outer island of the inner hebrides and what's it what's it called again t -t 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 -t. tell me what it's called again and it and it's a little island something like 650 inhabitants on your island i can't imagine what that would be like that's about the same number of people who probably live in lees on gary probably yeah. these on there's probably more so i just can't imagine so i can see in my so, mind's eye now that's where you are saying that our own island sounds really quite nice oh god doesn't it <laughs> there was an island i remember my friend sarah when i'd first moved to france she sent me this island that was up for sale near ireland and it was called horse island and oh, we both, I can remember you telling me, yes. And it yes, had different properties me. on it. And we went, just let's just do it. Let's just go to a bank and find the money and just go on it. And just, you know, like loads of houses on it. Not Well, not loads, but fair, around and about. We could just start this whatever, you know, this amazing centre. And then, of course, it was just a dream. But I always have dreamed about living on an island. Uh, howdy from BC. Lovely to see you. Carolyn, Caroline's here from Yahoo from Portugal. Monica, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful review. It means a lot to us. Thank you so it much. Does. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And and last night, guys, some of you were saying, oh, we'd love to give you something, coffee vouchers or something. Do you know what the best thing you can give us? Our reviews and put it up in the Phoenix group and wear your T-shirt when you get it. 
that you're a hoof hero do that and not and those that aren't through the challenge just get more people to come to the phoenix group more people more every person that comes in will spread a little bit more information and we know that will touch more equines it will help more equines and it will help more owners so that's what you can do for us thank you monica that was lovely Dawn says, result today, just bought 110 polypos for 30 quid from my friend, result. Very good. Awesome. That's, that's, that's cheap. Well done. Very good. Uh, Vanya says, hello, hello. hello. Uh, Carol Laura's here from Australia. Hello. Um, must be already over there. Tari, that's it. Yes, and it's not at all tranquil. It sounds like a motorway. It's Tari. Why does it sound like a motorway? Is it because of the the have you got wind turbines on there or was it just because of the wind and um just nature is that why it sounds noisy chloe's here hello chloe Hi, chloe, chloe, Holland. chloe runs long chloe runs long marsh track livery in the southwest uh fabulous track livery and we're going there in june on our three-day workshop so if you're in the uk come and see us at chloe's Catherine Arndell's here. Good morning from Australia. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Good morning from Ontario in Canada. Uh, hello. It's lovely to see you here. Here's Charlotte, Dr. Charlotte Scott. Hello, everybody. Hello, lovely Phoenix Warriors. Hello, all. Hi, Charlotte says Sarah. Isn't this lovely? Aren't we making friends? So nice. Hi, guys. Isn't this nice? We're all making friends. It's so good. Jen from New Zealand here for my daily fix. What are you doing? Are you filling hay nets? Are you going around doing horsey things at the moment? How many of you are doing horsey things right now? How many of you are doing horsey stuff? Hello, Becky. Lovely to see you. Charlotte says, I'm trying to get the woman who has her house horse in my fields to learn from HM. I specified barefoot only when she came. She just had the front hoof shod with pads. Oh, I'm sure if anyone can turn her over, It'll be you. It'll be you. <laughs> well. Get her to the dark side. <laughs> Move her over to the dark side. The, let the let the phoenix force be with you, Charlotte. Let the phoenix <laughs> force be with you. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? That's a bit <laughs> of a twister. And you did it very well. <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. Um, no, it's the sea hitting all around. It's so low, loud. Everyone thinks it's quiet and tranquil. Nature's not quiet, is it really? It isn't. And, and, uh, and you just swap the noise of a city and the cars and stuff. When you go into the, to the, to the, to the countryside and you think it'll be quiet. Is it not at all? Is it? Cause I, I wake up in the morning as soon as dawn is dawning. And as I'm normally going to bed at that time, actually. And the, the, Birds are tweeting. It's yeah, loud. Well, it, it's loud. Uh, it's yeah. lovely, but it's loud. It, it is lovely, but it's loud. Um, Charlotte says, I'll try to, to feel the Phoenix Force. Thank you, Phoenix Force. Be with you. <laughs> My horse needs his meds. Oh, is that what you're doing now? So what did we talk about last night? We talked about high-low syndrome. That was quite interesting, wasn't it? Did you have any light bulb moments about that? Did you have, uh, did you go away and have a think about it? Uh, did it? Does it make you look at your own horse's hooves in a slightly different way? Did you? Does any of what we're saying make you look at your horse's hooves in a slightly different way? Did what else did we talk about? We talked about. I think we had, we touched on laminitis and rotation. That will just that 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 little baby will just keep on rearing its rearing its head it will. a lot it will. every so often it will rear its head and we'll Before always we keep get coming too back. carried away the question oh <laughs> okay. we forgot yesterday didn't we we did your fingernails <laughs> so now you've had two days to go and research this but i'll tell you something you'll not find a lot of information on it. It's very weird. There isn't a, there are some people who are fingernail and toenail experts in the world, but you won't find an awful lot of information on it, which is weird, right? And now they're with us all our lives. And unless we do something extraordinary, which some of you who are watching will have done, 
like trap your finger in a car door or in a door jam or hit it with a hammer unless you do something like that they stay on you on you or unless you've got some fungal infection or some horridness they stay on the ends of your fingers and on your toes and don't you know it when you cut your toenail too short this is an interesting thing you know that because now and and i and i know this for a well as much as i know this for a fact but it is some it is a discussion point when you cut your fingernail too too short your fingernail your toenail too short you it doesn't feel nice when you walk why because that nail has been containing your flesh for want of a better word hasn't it it's you know you as you put your foot down things spread and things get pushed up etc things move and so when you've got a nail there it kind of contains it doesn't it and you know about it when you take that off not only that if you're if it, you've really lost quite a bit if you cut it too short you put your you put a sock on or whatever and you go to put your foot in a boot or something and you slightly knock it oh that hurts doesn't it so bring me back to that gary bring me back to that in a minute because i i i want to talk about that in terms of i know we shouldn't um conflate the two but uh i do want to come back to that in a minute so sarah says after my post today i decided the big horses actually do not need their rugs i can't look them in the eye they are not impressed i didn't put them back on diet starts today i can't look them in the eye they're like that oh who you've been watching i heard you why are you doing this every evening who's this person you're taking all this advice from get my rug back on <laughs> you should try living as prison. Um, yes, I rasp her heels today, realizing they are not there yet. Mm. When we're on the workshops, people can't wait. They don't want to leave because they're in a bubble and they love it so much, but they can't wait to get home all in the same time because when they get home, they're like, oh, and we always set up a, um, a Phoenix group, a WhatsApp group for every workshop that we do, which actually for months and months and for some forever yes <laughs> stays active you know periodically somebody chucks something and goes oh hi everyone this is what i've been doing which is lovely and uh and they go home and they look at their horse's hooves in a completely different light they don't they don't see it uh see their horse's hooves in the same way ever again you, you start to get your eyes very much opened I just learned why I couldn't get a handle on my pony's hooves. You showed a picture. I thought it was my pony. I wish I knew at the time what I just learned here yesterday. Ooh, you see, you watch enough or you keep watching some of these lives and some, I've, I must, I've got an It's Not Rocket Science lesson coming up soon. Uh, I think I'm going to do one on hoof cracks, I think. Um Dawn says, I tried to get my friends to join the Phoenix group several times, but sadly, she's just not interested. She said she's surprised that I still want to learn stuff. <laughs> uh, Every well. day's a school day. Every day. We are learning, oh, Gary and I. Ha Gary and I have light bulb moments practically every week. We go, oh, do you remember when that happened? Oh, oh. Of course you do. You're always learning. Still, and if you, 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 you've got to keep learning, being open, <clears throat> being open, being... Um, Vivian says, didn't I answer this yesterday? You might have done, but hopefully nobody was watching because you probably got it right. But we didn't discuss it entirely, did we? We just, we haven't spoken about it yet. I think you your did, answer Vivian. was right, Vivian, um, but we didn't elaborate on it. After every live session, my horse's hooves look different than they the day before. Yeah, yeah, as you go to see them, like, oh, God, I've just seen something else. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Um, Dawn Jackson, my friend, was like, I hope it works for you. Didn't want to know and say anything about her farrier, even though both the horses are no longer with us. Funny, isn't it? It is odd what people That's will good. do. Uh, uh 
Uh, we'll do that one in a minute. It get, let, remind me to go back to Sarah's. It changes, yeah. It changes the way we look at all hooves. I couldn't watch the the traitors trailer. What? Did you did you see those bloody hooves and um, pole dark even with Aiden Turner semi naked? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying, but I remember years ago putting up a picture of Aiden Turner on his horse with his chest out. And there was a horse in his chest out, and we were, and I was making a joke about it because he was fully clothed on clothed on the horse, and his chest was out, beautiful chest was out, on the other half of the the thing. And I went, I know what you horse owners are looking at, and it wasn't his chest, was it? It was the horsey. <laughs> okay, all right. Now nails. So they're with us all our lives. And con and I was just looking at mine today, thinking I I need to I need to cut them because they're getting a bit long, and I type away, and I hate them when they get to the point where they're sort of vibrating on my keypad. So I'm gonna have to cut them, but they just keep on growing. I only cut them a little while ago, and they keep on growing. But this one here, my thumb. So my two, I've got two, I've got two thumbs. Has everybody else got two thumbs? It's crazy, Lindsay. How did you manage to do that? Uh, you can't see, but that one's got more of a nail and that one doesn't. And that one is damaged right there, right at the toe, if you imagine me saying that, if with a horse, right? And it's got, underneath it, you can't tell, but it's got like this lump of connective tissue underneath that bit in the middle. And my nail grows, and if I knock it, it splits right there every time so i have to keep that one short because it always splits and it feels doesn't feel right when it's doing that and we look at our nails and they have um vertical lines on them and sometimes very occasionally they'll have horizontal lines on them but sometimes if you look at the vertical lines like i can see on my nail i want everybody to be looking at your nails right now everybody look at your nails critically assess your nails you'll see ridges and you'll go oh ridges now the ridges that are what do we call them would i call them vertical ridges up and down yeah so those that ridges that go that way pretty much every nail has got them right you can see and then some nails they've got like big ridges down them um occasionally you'll have a ridge going across particularly on your toenails that happens you see it but you, you're looking at your nails, aren't you? And the question was, how do they keep growing and yet they don't come off your finger? How does that happen? And yes, it's related to horses, isn't it? How come the horse's hoof keeps on growing constantly, every single day, but it doesn't fall off? It doesn't tear. Even though they'll tell you it tears, it simply doesn't. And it can get quite poorly and it doesn't tear. Um, uh, what's that? A lot of soil under my nails, but otherwise quite nice. Yours look good, suggesting good specific species <laughs> diet and management. Well, yeah, I don't know, though. I've never liked my nails. I feel like I've got hot. My sister's got lovely hands, just as an aside. And I've had hand envy with my sister for all my life, my older sister. And uh, I've got shovel hands, tiny little shovel hands with shovel fingernails. I'm, I'm, I'm gutted. Why couldn't I have been born with those beautiful fingernails? Even my daughter's got nicer fingernails than me. Anyway, where was I? So how does it happen? How does it happen now? are attached the same way well go on then how are they attached meanwhile i have a drink because i have a frog in my throat how are they attached what's going on folks i asked this at the um at the workshops and people are just like oh i've never thought about it Ooh, i've never thought of how does it keep growing it keeps it's attached but it still keeps on moving. How does it do that? How does it do that? I have to change my diet. My nails are much smoother. I find, yeah, and I find that my toenails particularly show things that are, that are not that I see them very often because they're always in double socks and freezing cold and boots. 
I see my toenails very often. Obviously, when I have a shower, because I don't shower my socks on. And when I'm in there, I'm like, oh, hello, toenails. I haven't seen you for a while. Um, not for you, your Lindsay or Gary. Lovely Phoenix Warriors in the comments. Oh, I can't respond to a comment in the live stream. How do we do it? Is it because I'm on my phone? Yeah, probably. And we can't either. I can if I'm doing it on the public page, but I can't if we do it in a group. It doesn't let you do comments responding in, in a group for some reason. Maybe my nails are shit because I eat too much chocolate. Grace, you and your chocolate. Do you remember that massive great big bar of chocolate that we gave you at the training camp? Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? Me too, Lindsay. L Lindsay husband says I have hands like an Irish navy. Like it's just not right, is it? Why is it some people have beautiful hands and others like you and me, Dawn, just have spades as hands? They disconnect and connect again further down. Ooh. It, I, I am embarrassed now. Uh, it, I, oh, sorry. I, I, oh, I see. I wasn't meant to put it up there. Oh, right. Oh, I see. Don't be embarrassed. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot. Just... So soon, um, Grace. It lasted 24 hours. What your chocolate did it really? That's terrible. Um, my daughter went to a concert and was dancing on a slope all evening in new trainers. Someone stood on one foot, she had both toenails lift and fall off. Yeah, Oops. but that's an extraordinary event, right? Isn't it? It's an extraordinary event. And people do all kinds of things with their fingers. They are long and yet they don't rip off. People have very long fingernails, natural fingernails, and they don't rip off. People climb rocks with, and their fingernails don't rip off. You guys have horses. You're forever out there doing stuff and you don't rip them off. You know, people play the guitar and do it. You know, it's quite hard on that. If you've ever played a guitar, the strings of I so want to play a guitar and I can't because it I'm such a wuss because it hurts my fingers. And and um, they don't rip them off because they are stuck and well connected to your nail bed, but they are continually moving along. And I'll put you out of your mis misery. It is to do with. Uh, enzymes such as the MMP enzyme, which Gary is uh, uh, uh. matrix metalloproteinase. <laughs> Very good, <clears throat> matrix metalloproteinase. They're not the only enzymes that are involved, of course, but they are some of the major enzymes. And these are MMP enzymes are where we have the extracellular matrices in mammalian bodies. And these basically, another word for extracellular uh, matrix is connective tissue. Connective tissue. What is another name for some connective tissue or the connective tissue we find all over our body? Are you swearing? Oh, I see. Fascia. Fascia. Now, we always <laughs> used to say when we do our 11, you know, Dr. Slim Churn, when we go through our 11... 11 organ systems. <laughs> Gary's like, I'm not going to even know what Dr. Slim Churn is. If you want to know what Dr. Slim Churn is, you're just going to have to become an HMB pro. <laughs> so, so, so Dr. Slim Churn is all the organ systems. And, uh, and, um, and it, it, people always, and in those organ systems, nobody ever talks about the fascia. And yet they're starting to realize now that fascia is massive, right? Well, they know that, but they didn't think about it before. Whenever they would do dissections, they'd, they'd cut those stringy bit out of the way so that you could get down to the juicy bits and the ligaments and the tendons that you could see. But all that sort of fine stuff underneath, ugh, they didn't want to look at that. And you've got fascia that's deep you get deep fascia and you've got fascia that's not so deep that's superficial and this is all over our bodies and it's part of the extracellular matrix and we've got it in our fingernails too and horses <clears throat> have it in their um in their hooves and we all tend to think of lamini attached like this which is correct right and and the and this is the hoof and it is coming and this is the pedal bone it has its lamini that don't don't move and then you've got the epidermis and it's continually growing down like that. So they're sort of going through and they're, they're, they're connected. 
But in order for them to do that, it has to be a process similar to your fingernail because they can't just let go, right? So these MMP enzymes go nipper, 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 tuck, nipper, tuck, nipper, tuck. So that's how it works. And it's a continual process that you can't stop. And it goes on all the way through your lives and all the way through the horse's life. It is something that is just happening all the time. But in between these lamini, there's connective tissue right? And that connective tissue is in a matrix. It's going in all sorts of different directions. It isn't just these lamini that are so incredibly uh, attached to each other and, and it, the way that they intermingle between each other. It's not just that. It's also all the connective tissue. Get out of the way, cat. It's also the connective tissue that everything's connected to. And that is your fingernail too. So all the time, you don't even know that it's happening. You have a base to your fingernail and you have a matrix base and that fingernail is being produced all the time. That horn in a very similar way that it's being produced in the horse where you've got the keratinocytes and they're being pushed all the time, pushed down your finger and they get exposed to the air and then they keep on going until it gets to the end and some people go and bite it off don't they? And, um, and that is a continual process. And up at the top there, we've got a cuticle, that rubbery kind of textured sort of um, it's like skin, but it isn't because it's a kind of horn. And that is to protect your horn, your nail to skin line, that bit there, which women, in fact, I was doing it earlier, might push back. I think men do. Gary's doing it right now, right? So to try and vain attempt to make my fingers look longer and more glorious, which is never going to ever happen. And so that that cuticle, we go in, we have a bath, right, with the cuticle, or we have go swimming, and it it sort of swells, doesn't it, with water, and it gets all sort of white and and obvious, and you can really really see it. Well, if you think of the comparison between that and your horse's hoof is very very similar there's a similar biology that's going on and even more so and that's why i was talking about these vertical ridges in your in your nail the one the the lines that go from the top to the bottom and they're quite evenly spaced that's because your nail is sitting on something similar to uh to how the lamina are shaped because it's shaped sort of like a corrugated iron, if you know what I mean, when something is corrugated. And that corrugation is there because it's to increase the surface area, isn't it? <clears throat> Increases the surface area. If you can increase the surface area on something where something is bonded to, it's going to be bonded even tighter. Right? And that is how your nails grow. It grows through enzymes, nipper and tuckering, and it just keeps on growing. It's attached on this <clears throat> through this extracellular matrix of connective tissue that is is cutting, is releasing and 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 gluing, releasing and gluing and really and it just happens over and over and over. It's just con it's happening now. Right. It's weird, isn't it? We're sat here now. Things are going on in our body. It's like we're not in control of it. It's weird. It's like stop it. Stop growing. It's all happening everywhere in our body things are happening all the time and that is the bit that people forget when it comes to understanding hooves because they talk about physics they talk about breakover they talk about bringing it all back because of this that and the other and they've forgotten that the hoof is an incredible biological structure. It is a biological feat of engineering of which no human could ever replicate. And yet, we feel the need to get in there and do things to that incredible biological feat of engineering. And we think it's just fine on the macro level. And we've got no clue what's happening. And I have a saying about when you do something to a horse's foot. Go on, Gary. If you, if you, if you do something um, to one part of the foot, don't be so naive that other parts of the foot, in fact, the rest of the horse, don't know about it. 
Don't be no don't be so naive. Don't you go no, and chop it. No. Yeah, you chop off toes. And I think that's what you wanted to go back to as well. When you end up taking away which that which Mother Nature put in place. So um, not to anthropomorphize, but if you just take your toenail or your fingernail back too far, don't you know it? Don't you know it? And oh, up here, you don't walk on our one digit. No, we don't. Horses walk on one digit. No, we don't. So it's even more important. And how many times? Interesting, eh? And how many times have you seen <clears throat> a hoof being relieved and rasped away? And and you're looking at the front of the foot, and uh, and um, I'll see if I can find a picture in a minute. You're looking at the front of the foot. No, you can't. No, hang on a minute. Just look, just no. Get, no, Flopsy. Flopsy no. has turned into a limpet. Away. Heart cups. <laughs> um, you're looking at a foot that's been traditionally treated and they've rasped away all of the hoof wall and all that is exposed is horn, right? Well, not horn, sorry. The, the epidermal horn, which is attached to the dermal horn. And you will find, you will hear very, in my mind, ignorant comments where people will say, oh, it's all right, you can't feel it because it's only gone back to the hard, but, you know, it's the dead, it's dead, so you can't feel it. It's the epidermal lamina, you can't feel it. don't know why I did it in that voice. Um, but you, you, it's, it's ignorant to think that, really ignorant, because you have, by just that, how long did it take? <sighs> Less than a minute to take away and rasp away all that hoof wall at the front and expose all that lamina, you've done several crazy catastrophic things to that horse's hoof, which is trying to heal, right? You've, number one, affected the papillae up at the top and them producing who are responsible for those, the health of the keratinocytes that are the, the, the cells that form the intercellular horn, uh, the intertubular horn and the tubular horn. You've affected them, so you've affected the growth rates. Do you care? Seems not. What else have you affected? Well, you've also affected the fact that you've removed this horse's pillars of support, right? Somebody I saw the other day had put up an image of uh, on my face on HM um, because uh, we were showing a, a lamella grounded toe. I like the word grounded toe. I think that's quite a nice way of putting it. And... Um, because it's got the wedge. And then she she drew in this like triangle on the foot and went, no, these are the two pillars of support. If you that are on the soul still, so it doesn't matter, you can take it away. That's so, so naive, I think is a good word to put that. Well, first and, first and foremost, most horses don't have four pillars of support. They have three main active wear pillars of support that are always in, that are always active no matter what. Uh, because most horses feet are not symmetrical uh, and when you have the toe wall on the ground it does play its part in that the horse can feel it brain is attached connected all the way down to the it knows what the tissues are doing it's connected so you've interrupted that. You've interrupted the pillars of support. You've now, that means, that means now there's a knock-on effect. That means the soul has got too much pressure going through it. It's it's going to have to callous because it's traumatized. It's not meant to take the support because Mother Nature put a perfectly good wall in place to do that. So you've done that. Another thing you've affected is that you've now affected the dissipation of energy. They know that the hoof wall itself dissipates a tremendous amount of energy before that energy hits the soft tissues and then the pedal bone and the joints. So you've just taken a great chunk of that away and as much as you fancy because some people take it all the way around, don't they? You've just taken all that away. So you've you, all of these things. Now you've got a horse that has disrupted his own patterns of how he lands on his foot because when he lands, big, heavy horse, and let's face it, even a Shetland and how heavy they are, 
they put their foot down. You have just taken that hoof wall. Just think about your own toenail for a minute. And I know we shouldn't anthropomorphize but, and conflate, but this is a similarity in this respect. You've, I was trying to find a good position. You've got, you've got um, P, P3 here and you've got your hoof wall, but you've now just taken the hoof wall up here. And so you've got laminae here that aren't contained anymore. Don't be naive to think it's just the hard stuff you can see on the outside. It's not. There's 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 a wedge in there, and it's it's confused tissue, but it's all in there. And when that horse puts his foot down, and there's a weight distribution, things are going to happen around the front, right? That shouldn't be happening. The knock-on effect is huge the ligaments in the horse's foot the tendons in the horse's foot and then on top of all of that the hoof care professional is going to change the way that they trim the horse's foot because they don't trim to the constants and they're gonna try and tame that horse's foot you got anything to add to that gary while i find a picture um no, I was trying to think of things that um, which um, to, to highlight the importance, um, perhaps with slightly different words, um, for the importance of the hoof wall being able to touch the ground. Obviously, as long as it hasn't been mechanically removed, you can't just trim the foot shorter to make it get there quicker. Um, um, and um, it, it's 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 almost that it needs that restorative stimuli is what I came up with. Restorative stimuli. The stimuli. So the stimulation from the hoof wall touching the ground helps to restore that hoof back to health. It keeps yes. it healthy as much as it can. That stimuli. Is, is one of the most important parts of that foot because without that, it all it, 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 it has an effect, like we said before. It has an effect on the rest of the hoof and the rest of the horse. That stimuli is, is, is immensely important. Let, let's even look at... If, even yeah, in, in, in a recovery position, it, it, even if we have things have gone a bit wayward, that's right. So I've got an image I can share with you now. Um, some of you may have seen this on the HM page. Um, can you see this image? <clears throat> yeah. Now, looking at that, you'd, you'd be th I know that these are not that the only thing that this this doesn't work is that the fact that these two hooves are not actually taken from the same angle, which is, is a bit of a shame. But you can actually see that, that this hoof wall is on the ground now. Uh, and uh, But on this one here, and this is the same animal, this is when this has been allowed to grow down. This is what it looked like to start with. And this is when this has grown down. You can see it's the same animal because look at the floor. It's the same same kind of rubbery floor. But if you look at this, when this animal was being trimmed, can you see how that hoof wall was just being removed completely? So it's not on play at all. And it's all the way around pretty much. Then you've got the, the uh, redness of the white lime, which is not that, not that very bright white bit. That's the inner hoof wall. Then the very red line that you can see there. I'm trying to get my... <laughs> that one is the white line, but it's it's traumatized and it's it's got um, blood in it because inflammation's going on in the foot. And then you can see here, this is the sole and this is what the horse is walking on. And just imagine, just try and remember what I just said about chopping your toenail off, right? This is soft tissue here. This is soft tissue and this has been put out of the way. It is not containing this soft tissue anymore like your, you feel when you put your foot down. Because when you put your foot down, things happen. So this soft tissue isn't contained in the same way. And, and we can't turn around to the horse, can we, and go, can you feel that? Can, can you feel that? Well, we know that many do because they turn, they, they walk away on sound and their foot's sore. And I hear it all the time. And so all those people who say, it's okay, you can remove it, horses are going to be fine. 
I, 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 I asked them to come into the Phoenix group because this, that's not the truth, in fact, is it? So <clears throat> what we're seeing here is we're seeing this, this problem where the foot is, is, isn't uh, behaving as it should. So it's affected all the growth rates, everything, the terminal papillae that live in the, in the, underneath the white line that forms the white line, the soul has been traumatized, it's going to have to start callousing. And I hope you can see here when I talk about balance points, how does this hoof care professional now know when they balance the heels to the toe? If that is in its right place, because it's removed the toe wall, whereas in this one, when it comes down, you know exactly where that's meant to be because it's it's there, right? That's what it was it, it was designed to be. Let's come back and have a look at some of the comments. Um, mm -mm. Well, I, I'm going to go backwards, I think. Um, Charlotte says, bloody evil, but so typical of what we see. Yeah, it's just not logical. No, it isn't on a biological uh, basis. It really isn't logical, but they think it's logical on a physics basis. And what they don't, they, they seem to forget is that straightforward physics doesn't necessarily apply the way we think it does to living organisms. Um, because organisms do things that physics says that's not possible, but they do it all the time. A bumblebee is is a good example of that with its diddly little wings and 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 um oh God, stag beetles have you ever seen a stag beetle the way it flies it flies upright <laughs> we love we get a lot of them around here and we call them a certain name which i'm not going to tell you what they are because it's not politically correct but we call them a certain name and we and the kids have grown up and they're like oh Mom, it's a and we always joke because we're saying to the stag beetles, the stag beetles, like, don't laugh at me flying like this. I can't help it. At least I can fly and you can't. But it defies the laws of nature, how the laws of physics, how does it do it? So we call it, it's much better to call it the physics of biology, which trumps anything else that you can imagine every single time because they just don't know what's going on down there in those cells. Okay, scientists have got a pretty good idea about biology nowadays, but they're learning all the time. They're learning that interplay between different molecules and chemicals and compounds and whatever keeps our body ticking over. And we just ignore it. And if you spend a, lo a, a, a long enough time around hooves, you see it all the time. You see biology, the physics of biology at play all the time. And this is because 99% of people that are in the hoof industry aren't biologists. And, and they don't think about the tissues and the cells and how important all of that is. Luckily for me, that's where I um, that's my that's that's my thing. My daughter, who's, who is autistic, ripped her big toenail off. The nail bed now produces a much thicker nail and mostly detached. So that is an extreme of case, of course. Yes, and it's like my thumb. And I also have a little toenail that I split in half when I was a kid running around a building site with no shoes on and stubbed my toe into a breeze block and split the nail. And it's never grown back normally ever since. But it's all right. It's still there. It's a bit funny. It's like horses that have big cracks in their feet they will grow out they may leave a scar but it's okay um physics of biology light bulb moment yeah it's the physics of biology um i put a ton of stones in a gateway i'm sure that it helped you grow my pony's hoof out as she had her toes dug out repeatedly before i got her within three months it grew out and then that was before i did the three-day workshop so she wasn't trimmed in those three months I'm sure the stones help reach the, the, the hoof wall. Yeah, stimulation. So sometimes people ask us, don't they, Gary, why do we rasp the outer hoof wall? And it's a tickle. You could do it with a... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's nothing to ta uh, take anything off. It's, it, it, it's, it's just a little bit of a tidy up um, and uh, it just stimulates the outer hoof wall. That's all. It's, 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 almost, it's simulating kicking up dust and stones as and when the... Um, uh, the horse is moving because our horses in the domestic world, most of them don't move enough or unable to move enough. Or on softer ground. Or on softer ground, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Alison says, if the horse is wearing or beveling its toe wall, do we just have to wait for that to change as the heels are brought to the correct level? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because if the foot isn't, if the if the heels aren't where they should be and the, the foot isn't balanced, is that Rachel doing stuff out there? What's she doing? If the foot if isn't... Mirror. Yeah, if the foot is loading out the fire, <laughs> is she? If the foot isn't balanced, then, then yes, the the wear patterns are not going to be, you know, the, the the they're going to look different. But I have to say, with squaring off toes, I I I have people say my horse does it all the time. He comes within the white line. In my entire career. I, I on a naturally trimmed foot, I've never seen it. But what I do see is it coming really, really close, close. Yeah. but but still leaving just two mil of, of waterline. But either side of that is a massive wall that makes it look like it's been squared off and it's been wall, worn off. And then I come along, Gary comes along, and we trim that properly, get rid of all that extra thickness that shouldn't be there and the foot looks normal again and then as it goes through its cycle for the next six weeks it does it again and it's so misread it's so misread it really is it's misinterpreted as being the horse is scuffing its foot and yeah they they will do that sometimes but that's if they've got you know they've got injuries and, and they've got biomechanical issues going on but that's when people go oh it's all a biomechanical issue rarely it's nearly always just the way the horse walks because horses really know exactly where their feet are. Uh, uh, I'm now, Sarah says, I'm now seeing the stretch getting bigger on Squire's feet. I think he must have had low grade laminitis before December. Or, oh, yeah. It has now left a high rim around the whole hoof. Yes, right. On both fronts. This is the big change. He has his toes on. Uh, if I were to rasp his feet with no experience, where is it safe to rasp to? If I don't go right down to the HSP as I don't have the experience confidence, will I dramatically affect how he walks before the farrier gets here? It's around a centimetre ridge around the whole hoof. No, it's it's that's great. I, I was only having this conversation with Bethan from Gawsworth today because we're seeing and seeing she just right up at the top where the periopal is. You know that where that little rubbery cuticle, if you like, the periopal is up at the top of the hoof. There's just this line on Wexford's foot, which is just like a depression, and it almost could look like it was an abscess hole, <clears throat> but of course it's not leaking anything. And um, and Beth had sent me a photograph of it, and and I and I said, "Aha, that's the change." It's going through the change. It's incredible when you see the change. And when you see the change, you know <clears throat> a couple of things. One, <clears throat> I do apologize. One, that your diet and management is getting better. And two, that the trim is improving. Now, sometimes you get that massive change um, all in one big one, all in all in one go. Um, and other times, let's see if I can find one for you. Other times, you it takes a few hoof capsules for it to really grow out. You get some, you get very dramatic changes if you get it right from from the offset. So I'm I'm going to show you. Some of you will have seen this picture before. Let's show you this. Okay, let me show you. This is what we're aiming for when we're rehabbing horses. We're aiming for this. Can you see? Now, if I, uh, I often say, if I put that picture up on Facebook, that people, it, it triggers all sorts of funny things in people. Some people will go, oh my God, that's terrible. Look at that awful long toe. It's bending the hoof, right? All those people that are into compressing horn tubules, oh, they'd have a field day on that. And other people say, um, oh, my God, you know, it, it's never, it, it's broken. But it isn't, right? Because actually what happened was that, oh, I've lost it. Why has it gone? 
what happened is is if 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 I was to sort of just oh I wonder if I can do this if I was to uh if I was just to turn that like that and then I was to expand that and move across a bit and I showed you that you'd be like oh yeah that's that's the start of a horse's hoof it was in a quiz you'd be like yeah that's the start of a horse's hoof because that's looking really quite normal you've got the hoof past an axis coming in okay it's a funny angle and then I, I start to come out and you're like oh what's that at the bottom well that was the stretch that was how much p3 was in the incorrect position the stretch under here equates to the how much p3 has basically um not been in the right position or p3's been in the right position but the hoof wall has grown away that's how much separation was caused through laminitis it's one or the other and so this is what we term the healing angle and this is a really good example and this big groove here was the change and that groove was formed right up here right at the very top in the coronary band that was the major change and then everything above that said the hoof said thank you very much is the new hoof growing through and this is the old hoof growing out now this this was a mare that i was trimming way back over uh 16 16 17 years ago and um god is it that long ago blimey and you can actually see here that at the time that i was doing this i was taking off a little bit <coughs> too much toe can you see you can almost you can, i think you can see it over here now i don't i didn't remove half as much as close to what anybody else did but i was following the likes of pete ramey and bowker at the time <coughs> and i was conflicted <clears throat> I was leaving the toe. I wasn't chopping it off like other people, but I was trying to um, take a little bit more off than I should. And if, if we look, um, I might be able to show you more of an example of that. Um, you can't really see it very well, but if I, oh, hello. If I bring in this picture here, you might be able to see now this is this was a poorly foot that was healing right you can see her heels are down to the hard sole plane you can see that she's got some separation that is all healing and that i'm not really touching all of this because i'm not but i you can see that there's infection that's hanging around but it's getting better but you can see i'm getting a bit tight here and you can see that this is a bit dirty that's because that was her pillar of support at the time. Until I learned my lesson when these animals just weren't, some, some of them just recovered despite of what you're doing, but not all of them. And when you finally realize, well, they do recover, but they, they, they take a long time and who knows what's going on with P3 inside. When you finally realize the error of your ways and you start thinking about biology more, I'd just given, I'd just forgotten about it, really. I just was listening to what other people were telling me and this is what I was doing. Um, and boy, oh boy, I don't do that anymore. But, you know, it's worth telling you, I've walked the walk. I've got the T-shirt. I've read the book. I've seen the film. I've walked the walk. Now... I can talk the talk because I've been there. So when people go, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You've got to take it off. I'm like, I've been there, pal. I moved on. I moved on. Um, I think there's lots of people talking about chocolate in, in the thread. Um, it's such an impressive and dramatic change. Isn't it impressive? It really is. It's so brilliant. And that is the physics of biology in fact i think i might name this live the physics of biology that is something we are not in control of and that they think oh the horse is going to trip because the breakover is affected oh even and because they'd take it back loads more than what i was doing but she didn't trip she didn't have a problem at all she doesn't trip because trip biomechanics are different between a, a biped and a quadruped I'm not going to go into it now but they are different and tripping isn't and when a horse trips they're not tripping usually because their feet are too long they're tripping because of other factors 
and the fact that there's somebody on their back rushing them through a situation when they they can't get their strides through properly or they it's a fear response or, or loads of different reasons why horses trip you can't just put it down to the fact they got a long toe is just silly uh, i love to hear about your journey makes one feel better of their own yeah right i i'm not We're hiding on a journey every day is a school day I'm uh, not. And, and it does take um, a, a bigger person to realize that what perhaps they had done in the past um because that's what we were taught and that's what we were told um and then you you do your own thinking and you have your own experience um and having your own very big herd of mainly rescue horses um i, I, I if it wasn't for them uh, and having amazing clients as well um i, I don't think that we wouldn't be where now, would we, Linz? No. Clients, all... our, our own rescue horses, um, all of that is 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 part of this big, bigger picture and being that critical thinker. That's that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. That you 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 got to If somebody's telling you it's it's so, think about it the other way around. Is your glass half empty or is it half full? So retracted souls. We talked about that before. When they go, oh, my God, the soul is sunken down. It can't do that. It's physics it and biology says that you can't do that. It doesn't. It's not made up like that. It's not got that fatty tissue that can just, you know, be sunken down. It's just it, like vacuum packed. It doesn't happen. But you're looking at it the wrong way because what you should be looking at is all the callous material that's around it, making it look like that is what has happened. And uh, there was an interesting comment on the group um, and Deborah Norris, who I don't think is watching, but um, Deborah Norris is is a follower of ours, and I think she lives in Scotland, and she's like super super bright IQ because she was something to do with. <clears throat> she's a physics engineer, and um, something to do with space and all that sort of stuff. I think anyway, super super bright person, and she is a massively independent critical thinker. And so this girl had put up this comment about Bowker and how Bowker had said that <laughs> how you have to remove the toe wall, that it's OK to remove the toe wall because um, there are more laminae. He found that there were more densely populated laminae around the toe region. And so by rem removing the toe wall, you're going to either A, alleviate that or B, it's going to be OK because the you know they're densely populated and and so that's why it's fine and she'd read that from from Bowker and 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 that was that and then Deborah came back and went oh yeah but if you know anything about how tissue and bone reacts to pressure you'll know that it reacts by often putting down more for instance calluses right it puts down more that's how it reacts to pressure that's how bone reacts to, to, to pressure. Well, bone will, the P3 will start remodeling and try and create a ski tip. But over time, if it has, you know, too too much, uh, if it starves its supply, obviously it's going to, 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 to die off. But um, she then said, look at this a different way. The, her, the horse has got a pillar of support, its toe wall, at its toe, that is why it's got more laminae there, because it is a pillar of support and it is stimulated more laminae to be there. You take that away, you are going against biology. And it was just brilliant. And I just, I just love that. I just love the fact that people don't take things as read, that people read something. Most people just read it, right, and go, oh, that's what's happening. So many people, there, there are people on the internet that are that are so stuck in an unprogressive way because stifling pro progression because all they ever spout out is where's your scientific data where's your research and yet it is well known that equine research is so poorly evidence-based and what do i mean by that i don't just mean or oh, you're going out and you're showing evidence of of you know track systems and stuff i don't mean that i do mean that but it, it's more than that. 
evidence-based science is is something that was lacking in the medical world and charlotte will tell you that and um, and is now being is 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 now coming more and more into the fold and what does it mean it means that if if you have a hypothesis um a theory and and you you trial it in a lab for instance with cadaver hooves because that's what the whole of the equine limb and biodynamics and uh, la uh, laminitis and everything has all been based on. Um, if you do that in a lab and you come up with a hypothesis such as the SADP1, which was which was coined by Pollitt, which is a suspensory apparatus of the distal phalanx. In other words, P3 is suspended in the lamini. Uh, the whole weight of the horse or the, that's what they call it, but the actually, fact, tissues have more weight in them, if you think about it, than bones. That's another way around, you see, that they, they haven't thought about. Um, but they're saying, they say that the whole weight of the horse is suspended in the, by these lamini that are holding the horse up. Now, there are con there's connective tissue in there, but that connective tissue is not like ligaments and tendons. It isn't, does not anything like it, but they're saying that it's suspended um um by that so that was it that was what they said they've then failed for the next 40 years well he, he coined that around about 25 years ago i suppose something like that but then they failed from then on and before um because they have tried to replicate it right give a horse an overdose of oligofructose, we should see rotation because the lamini fail, but they don't see it. And they're like, oh, boof, that's not right. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. They're going through trials at the moment and they're not exposing these trials and they're not public, but I know they're going on, where they are um, trying to induce supporting limb, laminitis, e.g. rotation. God knows, I don't know what they're doing to, to, to these animals that they treat like lab rats, but they're probably doing stuff that is not very ethical, like tying one leg up and make forcing them to stand on the other and then filling them up with oligofructose and stuff like that, which is highly unethical. I'm just supposing that's what they're doing, but I'm pretty sure that's probably what they are doing. Um, and this is an evidence-based science. Evidence-based science is going out into the field and testing your theories. That's evidence-based science. So you go out and you test your theories with um, loads of, of um, loads of animals. So in the medical world, if you're starting to develop a vaccine and in the lab, you see this vaccine working, right? You then have to do evidence-based studies to see if it actually what effect it's going to have on the human beings. And we all know that very keenly, don't we, after COVID, when they didn't do their due diligence and they didn't do it for long enough because it takes a long time to do these studies and to see the effect it has on all different uh, people and people in different stages of their life and, and pregnant women, et cetera. They didn't do their due diligence. And so what we have nowadays, and they were warned about this, is that we now have problems. And it, and and I think there's no doubt about that now. It's not disputed at all, is it? Everybody knows. But that was just down to evidence-based studies being truncated and not being done long enough because they were panicking because they wanted to get it out into the big wild world. Well, this has never happened in in when it comes to laminitis and when we deal with horses hooves they come up with theories they don't go out and have the real data that shows that this is so so for instance all over the internet a few days ago was the the picture of the shortened hoof with with a uh um a ruler from the apex of the frog to the to the what ha was used to be a wall there but it completely been removed so it was just sole now, remember everything I've tell, told you tonight about the physics of biology. You do something to the one part of the foot. Do not be naive to think that the rest of the foot and the body don't know about it because they do. Anyway, they'd 
they they put this and and this was because and they were quoting it everywhere that Bowker Bowker this famous scientist had said that if you that all horses should have short toes naturally short toes is what they should have not forced short toes that you are forcing upon a horse's foot but he said they should have short toes and if they don't have short toes he's going to pull the whole foot foot forward well that's just an overgrown foot right um, but it's all come on the back of us saying horses should have long toes because they've not understood at all what we're about. Not at all have they understood what we're talking about. Anyway, and he said that if you do that, the frog improves. Now, I know because I know I've read 86 publications by uh, Robert Bowker and 38 of them are on equines and 29 of them are on cadaver hooves. And then um, he did lungs and he did uh, nerves and he did bits and pieces like that. Now, I know he hasn't done a piece of research, evidence-based research, or in fact, other research in, on cadavers. Because when you kill a horse and you look at the legs, how can you just make an assumption about something? And you can have a theory. Oh, this has happened because of that. I think this has happened. But you don't go out and go, this has definitely happened because of that because you don't have any evidence-based studies to back it up. you got to get in the field and prove it. And it's no good saying the rest of the world who's going out there chopping off these toes are all proving it because they're not because I can prove otherwise and Gary can prove otherwise because some of these horses, many of these horses have got problems that, that which range from range from being foot sore which range from arthritis throughout the foot and the rest of the body you know the world chops off toes the world has got an arthritis epidemic so it isn't just about oh what happens to p3 so they're not doing these evidence-based studies and yet they're extrapolating this across the entire world and then and across an entire species how many zebras do you think are out there or wild ass, or horses that live on the on the Eurasian steppe, Przewalski's horses that are being rewilded, horses that are on the Great Basin that live in these semi-arid environments with sparse, fibrous grasslands that they have to travel miles and miles a day to, to get enough quantity to feed this massive animal. Do you think they're taking their toes off? Do you think they're taking that wall away on every single trim? These are the horses are having this done on every single trim. They could be the nicest hoof you've ever seen, but they'll still take the toe off because that's what they do. That's how they trim. This hysteria caused by a handful of people, and we're talking in one hand, a tiny handful of people have created hysteria throughout the entire world. And beyond that, there's no standard either, right? Because somebody put up on that page, oh, what do I measure? Is it 40 mils or 20 mils? And the answer was, well, it's just different with each horse, but somewhere along that route. What? You come back, people not, people, sh the quote was, I think from Bowker, people should stop being afraid and sh need to come back into beyond the white line what <laughs> what <laughs> he's meant to be a scientist have we got forgotten the physics of biology just because you're talking about you know physics and 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 that's going to improve frog health wow okay so it's, it, it has no effect on the papillae no effect on the hoof wall it's traumatizing the soul it's traumatizing the papillae in the soul it's okay compression and uh, compressing the um horn tubules in the soul which we've seen time and time again when we've, we we have looked at these things in when we have looked at cadaver hooves you've got to do evidence-based studies you've got to get out there and prove your theory do you know what we do we prove our theory because we're doing it the other way around we have lots of evidence have we got it published in an oil and an all boys journal no why because we'd never even get in anyway <laughs> we wouldn't get in because we're nobodies and we wouldn't get in and uh and we've not been funded uh so no we we wouldn't even be considered but that's okay
because we have plenty of studies of of uh and it's not anecdotal because that's just a shutdown that's just like saying or oh, tin hat conspiracy theory don't do that sort of thing you're just shutting people down and that stifles progress into the future if you hide yourself behind flawed scientific research you stifle progress it won't stop it but it will stifle it and who are the people that push progress forward the people right on the fringes the people right on the outside the people the people who are willing to keep pushing forward and show their evidence based studies not the people in the center who are all the people who are relying on funding who have different agendas not those people who go don't don't want to know unless it's written in a paper that stifles progress it won't stop it like i said but it stifles it and these people on the outside that are on the fringes who get stones thrown at them gradually 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 they start to win over and i want to leave you because we're going to go now with a quote Uh, is this our, our, our favourite saying? Arthur? Yeah, which I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everybody knows. If I can find it. Uh, 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 uh. I might I've have got to it if you, if you can't find it. I just want to find it on um, um, through. Have you got it online? I just want to no, show I, it. I, Oh, here we it. go. I, I think I've got it. All right. Okay. Okay. I just let me put it up here. Let me paste it in. I bet so many of you will know this already, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. And this is what Arthur Schopenhauer said, and he was a grand philosopher. Okay. He was a grand philosopher, and this is what he said. And ever it was thus. I got things coming up the group. This is what he said. All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as being self-evident. Arthur Schopenhauer, grand philosopher. It's so true. It's so true. The three stages of truth is what we call that. The three stages of truth. First, they 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 laugh at you. They they think you're hilarious. There's you're somebody to throw to to joke about. It's so funny. Years ago, when Hoofing Marvelous started, a face group group started that some of you may remember if you've been with me for long enough called boobs boobs booted it, out of the barefooters <laughs> booted out of the barefooters and it was boobs and it was full of a bunch of it was mainly farriers and mainly from uh north america but they were it gathered farriers from all over the place boobs and it was mainly there to just basically have a go at hoofing marvelous and they had quite a lot of people back in the day and um so that that was the ridiculed stage um, a lot of what we're at now is the violently opposed stage. So people are getting quite nasty about it and they're violently opposing it and, and it's rising and you can feel, and I love that. I want that rise to happen because the more that they rise, the more it starts making people question stuff. And then eventually it will be accepted as self-evident, but we have to ride that roller coaster and we are the ones on the fringes. Where are the ones that are not going to be stifled? We're not going to have progression stifled. We are those people. Welcome. I'm glad you found us. Oh, yeah, Charlotte remembers boobs. It was toxic, wasn't it? I never went in there. I was never allowed. Um, and if they, if they get inconvenient results, they put them in the bin. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, oh, I'm not going to put that one up. <laughs> Oh, I've seen them. I'm not. I'm not. I. I. I just stick comments up without reading them. I'm reading this one. Um, 
uh, Alison says, amongst the issues with research are how trials are set up, of course, whether they're blinded or not. Big enough numbers, avoidance of all causes of bias, which they can't do, and they never, ever, ever, the variables are intense with, with horse research. How it's funded, invested interests of the sponsor and researchers, even if sub, uh, of subconscious yet, and the publication bias, a massive issue itself, a huge issue itself. They want to publish things that make everybody look like the, you know, the, the on the. I still don't understand why my insurance companies are not interested in funding some sort of research into HM HM diet management trim. It it would save them so much money. Are the heads of insurance companies linked to vets and feed companies? Well, I told I I, I mentioned about Agria, didn't I? Biggest pet insurance company in Europe, who got have now got together with Lars Ropstorff from the Swedish Agricultural University. And Invar, uh, Pedder Fredriksson and his father Invar Fredriksson, and they mainly Pedder, and the, and they've been looking because Pedder won in the Olympics barefoot, and they've been looking at the differences between shod and barefoot. Why is an insurance company looking at that? Why looking to save money? Because they want to save money, and how are they going to save money? How much money do you think they're spending out on tendon and soft tissue injuries caused by? Horses that are competition and sports horses that are shod because they're terribly compromised a lot. So why are they funding this research? Because their premiums will go up. If they're, so if you're, if they're shod. So if you're barefoot, and because they're spending so it's hand over fist, if you're barefoot, it's gonna your 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 premiums won't be anywhere near as high as ones where if you if you shoe your horse, that's your choice. But you have to pay a little bit more because you're you're more of a risk to us than that person there who's barefoot. Pedder isn't a risk to us. All you other people that are shod are a risk because you're more likely. I'm going to say it's definitely going to happen, but you're more likely. And it's all risk analysis when you're talking about insurance companies. You're more likely to be the one costing us money. So you're going to have to pay through your teeth for that pal you want to shoe your horse fine we'll insure you but it'll be more money so yeah that, it's it's happening it's happening science is essentially human beings trying to understand nature i tell you what they forget though because science is basically observation it's just observation and making assumptions on observation um um, I think there were, I think we've had questions, but I've missed so many because I've been yakking on as normal. Living with numbers, politely said, and all numbers of compromised equines is such an eye opener. 21 at our center and it's eye opening on every level. Yeah. When people have one or two equines or even three, you become quite obsessive about those equines. My suggestion and Gary and I always say this, get a few more. Get a few more. You, you can't obsess over them all. And then you want to do what's what's nice and easy and simple to keep them happy and healthy, and you make it as easy as possible because you can't obsess. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, money, money talks and influences behaviour. Mm. It does. Mm. Finally, but the barefoot trim has to be right. You know, I, I, yeah. Like I said, we're at base camp, I think. I think I hope we're just arriving at base camp. Charlotte says, brilliant as ever. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And so are you. I love you. I love you. I wish I was there giving you a big hug right now, having our having our tea brought out on a tray. And a bit of cake. Jen <laughs> with Jenny's cake. <laughs> putting the world to rights. I miss those days. All right, my lovelies. Uh, I I I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, go back and watch on YouTube if you miss them. And if you want to watch them again, they're all going up YouTube. This won't be up for a couple of days, but they are going up bit day by day by day. God knows what if we'll we, talk. About. If go we on, missed Jen. your questions, if we missed your questions, you'll just have to come back tomorrow and try again. <laughs> Simples. Okay, let, let, let me think of a question. Gary, can you think of a question quickly? Um, oh, um, uh, oh, um. Whoa, come on, Lindsay, you could think. I can't think of one. I can't think of one. I can't think of one. 
Uh, oh, I can't think of one. I'll have to write one down for tomorrow night. I can't think of one right now. I'm too tired. I'm tired. I didn't go to bed till 6 30 in the morning. Please don't let me do that again tonight. I need to go to bed early. All right. I love you all. We love you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a Phoenix warrior. Keep on going. Day 16 tomorrow. We can do it. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.